Good afternoon, geometry students. Today we're going to start with a new unit, all over circles. Today we're going to start with some vocabulary. I know vocabulary can be kind of boring, so I went ahead and gave you the definition already. All we're going to do is draw the example of what it would look like. So starting off with a circle is a set of points equidistant from a given point, so the center. So on my example here, obviously that's a circle. So our center point, let's call that C. What a definition of a circle is saying is that every single point is the same distance. No matter where it's on, all of these are the same. Okay, but you won't normally see that. You'll just see the circle with the center. And that's normally how we'll name it too. We'll call it circle C because we name it after the center. Okay, radius, this is something that we've done before. Of course, we've done area where it's like pi r squared or circumference. But now the definition of a radius is a segment with one endpoint at the center and one on the circle. So if I were to do a radius, one endpoint on the center, one endpoint, let's call that A, on the circle. That would give me radius. So sometimes you'll call it radius CA, a line segment has a line on top, or sometimes they'll name it with a lowercase letter, so R. So sometimes they'll say R is the radius. Okay, the next thing is a chord. This is something new. A chord is a segment with both endpoints on the circle. Both endpoints are on the circle. So say there's one here and there's one here. So that would be a chord. Let's make this A and B. And again, it's a line segment. So when you name it, you just have to make sure you put the line on the top. Diameter. The diameter is a special type of chord that passes through the center of the circle. So over here, the center was obviously about right here, so it didn't go through the center. But if it's a diameter, here's my center, then my two endpoints, A and B, and it would go right through the center. That would be our diameter. And again, you only have to name it with the endpoint, so A, B with a line over. Okay, the next vocabulary is a secant, a line that intersects the circle in two places. So don't get this confused with a chord. It almost looks the same. So here's my center. And then if I were to have two points on the circle, A, B, only this time it's a line, not a line segment. So that means that it's going to go through those two points, arrows on the ends. So that would be A, B, like that with arrows on the ends, because it doesn't stop. It keeps going. Okay. Then the next thing that we have is a tangent, a line that intersects the circle at exactly one point. Okay, so let's call this T for tangent. So it's going to be a line that only goes to the circle that one time. Actually, let's use some other letters here. So let's use R and Q. So when we name that, we would call that line RQ. Now the point of tangency is the point at which the tangent line intersects the circle. So I'm going to draw the same picture from above. So if I had that, R, Q, and then here's the point where it touches the circle, T. The point of tangency is only that point. So we would say point T. Okay. Now let's look at angles. A central angle 
is an angle with the vertex at the center and two sides that are radii. So here's my circle. Let's say the center is point P. The central angle will be any angle that uses P as a vertex. So then I'm gonna name these other two points A and B. A and B are both gonna be radii. So both are radius. Angle A, P, B. Make sure that P is in the middle because it's the vertex. That's a central angle. So obviously it's called central because it touches the center. The next type of angle is an inscribed angle. So this time, a vertex that's on the circle, so let's just say right here, point V, and two sides that are chords. Remember, chords are points that touch the circle. So these will not necessarily be the same, but that's my inscribed angle, A, V, B. The next definition is an arc, a portion of the edge of the circle defined by two endpoints. So, if I used A, and then right here I have B, the arc is the part of the circle in between them. That would be arc. And then the way we name this is we still use endpoints, A and B, but it's gonna have a curve on top. That's to let you know that it's not just a regular line, it's a arc. The next thing is a minor arc. So this is an arc with a measure less than 180 degrees. So remember 180 degrees is like a flat line. So that would be 180 on one side, 180 on the other. So our minor arc has to take up less than half the circle. A, B, minor arc would be this part, because that is less than half the circle. When it's a minor arc, you're only gonna use two letters, or variables. So just like before, this is arc A, B, and make sure you have a curve over the top. Okay, then we have a major arc, which is just the opposite. It's an arc with a measure greater than 180 degrees. So if I already use those same two endpoints, now I want the side that's bigger than half the circle. So I want this half. Okay, the thing about major arcs though is that you need to use three letters. So this would be arc A, C, B. It lets you know which side of the circle is the side that's colored in. Then we have a semicircle. So a semicircle is an arc with a measure equal to 180. So the endpoints are going to be on the diameter. So I know it's a diameter when it goes through the center. So there's my diameter. So each piece is a semicircle, A, B, and then of course on the other side, uh, B, A. So it has to be exactly half. Then some formulas that you guys should be familiar with. Area is pi r to the second power, where r is radius. Circumference is two pi r, r is radius, or you can think of it as pi times diameter. Arc length, this is the only one that's brand new. And it's, if x was the degree of an arc, and we know that c is circumference, arc length would equal the degree of the arc times the circumference divided by 360, since that's the measure of a circle. Here I just have it sideways, but it should look like this. Okay, and those are our vocabulary words for circles.